Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney and welcome to From the Rabbi's Bookshelves. Our book today is by Martin Buber. He was an important Austrian and then Israeli philosopher, born in 1878, dies in 1965. He started out in the mainstream Zionist movement but then moved to a new position, believing that both Jews and Arabs should share a state equally. Uh, this places him on the outside edge of uh, Israeli philosophers and intellectuals of his era. He wrote important philosophical works, including I and Thou. Uh, and he was also interested in Hasidut, the movement in Judaism which is much more mystical than the mainstream Judaism of its time, developed in the 18th century under the Baal Shem Tov, and has become a very powerful force in Judaism even to today, with many forms of Hasidut uh, all over the world. Now, Buba realized that although there were Hasidic theological and uh, homiletical texts, that the soul of Hasidut was in fact its stories. You could understand more about the theology of the Hasidim and the Rebbers who led them by looking at the stories they told in an informal way than in the abstract philosophical or theological works they produced. And so Buber collected them and edited them. And this is one such volume, Tales of the Hasidim. And in it he takes these stories and does not in fact analyse them explicitly, but because he is editing them, the editorial process itself is a form of commentary and helps you understand where the Hasidim are coming from and how it was a, a break and a split from what had come before. Let me read you two stories which I think are very uh, significant and indicative about the, the founder of Hasidism, about the Baal Shem Tov. So here's one story. One Simchat Torah evening, the Baal Shem himself danced together with the congregation. He took the scroll of the Torah in his hand and danced with it. Then he laid the scroll aside and danced without it. At this moment, one of his disciples, who was intimately acquainted with his gestures, said to his companions, Now our master has laid aside the visible, dimensional teachings and has taken the spiritual teachings unto himself. So let's break down that story a little bit. First of all, it's set in the context of a dance, which is very Hasidic in its nature. It's about the physical, bodily expression of devotion, not just sitting and either praying or sitting and studying. That itself was very controversial amongst other Jews of the time. And then we have the Baal Shem taking a strange step, doing something peculiar and unexpected, setting aside the Sefer Torah. But his disciples are so reliant on his every gesture and become such keen students of his every indication that they read something very deep into it. And so we see not just a physical process of dancing with and da dancing without a Sefer Torah, we see instead a major theological point or a major piece of theological progress. He has set aside the obvious teachings of the written Torah that is accessible to everybody by just by picking up a, a book and looking into it. And now he's taken unto himself the um, spiritual teachings, something deeper and more mystical. So here we have an insight into the Baal Shem Tov being not just a regular rabbi, but somebody who has access to the deeper spiritual depths. Well, here's another story, which is a critique of those who don't understand why the Hasidim do what they do. Rabbi Moshe Chaim Ephraim, the Baal Shem's grandson, told, I heard this from my grandfather. Once a fiddler played so sweetly that all who heard him began to dance, and whoever came near enough to hear joined in the dance. Then a deaf man who knew nothing of music happened along, and to him all he saw seemed the action of madmen, senseless and in bad taste. The Hasidim can hear the music. The Hasidim understand the power of the dance and all that represents for Hasidut. But those who oppose Hasidim and Hasidut, they're like deaf men. All they see is madmen and they accuse the Hasidim of being mad and lunatic and inappropriate, in bad taste. It's because they're deaf. Those who can hear understand the power of Hasidut and its value, and those who are deaf just think that the Hasidim are madmen. So not only a statement of the point of view of the Hasidim, but also a critique of those who objected to them and, and opposed what they were trying to do. Thanks for joining.